For a bird that's hurt, wounded, or ill, this sanctuary just outside Vancouver's ever-growing suburbs may be its last hope to fly again. It's called the Orphaned Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. It's a mash unit for injured birds with its own full-time Florence Nightingale, Beverly Day. Around here, the birds come first. It's a relationship. The majority of the birds are local. Wing injuries, right, juveniles hit by cars, um, some that have been shot, um, and some interspecies fighting, depending on the time of year it is. Today, a volunteer helicopter pilot has brought in an owl with a broken wing. Without intervention, it would die on the roadside. The best part is when they come in ill and injured, knowing you can help somebody else's mess up. Hey, calm down. Man has interfered, uh, either with chopping the trees down, hitting them by a car, um, the orphans they haven't, but the majority of birds come in injured, and it's been man that has caused the injury. So I'm just, in a way, putting something back to nature. Bev Day and her team of volunteers rescue an average of 300 birds a year. Yeah. For the last two decades, she's been on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Would I do it if I knew it would be this big? Uh, sometimes that's a hard question to answer at the three o'clock in the morning phone call. But again, you still do it, you still get up and you go out in that rescue because it's a commitment you've made, you know, to wildlife. Two more seconds and we're done, sweetie. For this owl, at least two weeks of rest will determine if it will actually recuperate enough to be released into the wild. It's a waiting game. You don't want them bonding to you. Uh, it makes it impossible to release them and dangerous for the general public if they're released. There are exceptions, though. Audie is one of the few full-time residents at the centre, an owl that could not survive on his own. Ordinarily, in the nest, he would have become dinner for one of his siblings because he didn't have the natural aggression. The front of his face is too narrow, which actually makes the bottom of his beak stick out more than a regular barn owl. Back of his head's flat, his ears are too small, his feet are too large for a male barn owl, which make him knock need. has a depth perception problem when he flies. Yeah, I'm talking about you. And he's afraid of the dark which is visual again. <laughs> so and that's like for a nocturnal owl. So that's why we call him our special needs barn owl. It's not only the birds that fascinate me and everything I'm learning because I had never ever, you know, gone to school enough to go through to learn. Now I wish I had as, as I've progressed with age. It's a privilege to be able to work at, uh, with this wildlife. I mean, how many people get the chance to hold an eagle? How many people get a chance to have an owl sit on their shoulder, even if he has special needs? How many people get to let one go to the wild that came in with, with a broken wing that you know would have died without your care? But it's not always a happy ending for the injured birds brought here by the volunteers. OK, so what you got for me today? A uh, red-tailed hawk. OK. And a couple so of... side of the road? And... Yeah, I was eating on a rabbit, and uh, May as well somebody see must have hit it and not even tried to stop. So. Uh, okay. The job is frustrating sometimes when a bird, in all likelihood, okay, should well, be released, and that bird down. gives up that will to live. Upset, yeah. And it's frustrating because you can't deal with nature that way. You know, nature when uh, nature is nature, it'll only allow you to do so much. Bev and the volunteers rush to help the injured hawk. Okay. We may not do too much with them because we may start to lose them. The bird's wing is severely broken, forcing Bev to make the difficult decision to euthanize. A few weeks later, in the 300-foot practice flying cage, it's time to assess which of these eagles is strong enough to be released. It's like if you were letting a child go, go on to university to become a doctor or a, a space technician or, you know, it, it's a feeling of accomplishment. It's, it's, it's a job well done. It's a good parenting job, if you want to call it that. For 20... Before releasing the eagle, Bev will examine the bird one more time to ensure it's ready. So you're going to go soon. 
a keel on a bird. If you can imagine, this is sort of a funny analogy, but uh, a turkey you're going to cook for a Christmas dinner. There was no breast meat on this on this bird at all. You could feel right down to the to the rib bones, basically the rib cage. And now there's little tiny tiny bit of a keel, not much. Basically, other than starving, no real injury at all, just bad starvation. So uh, feathers are in good shape. He's flying the 300-foot cage fantastic, so we know she's ready to go. One, two, three. It's really great when you can see these bald eagles being released back to the wild and know you've had a part of it. And remember the injured owl, the one with the damaged wing? Well, it's going home too. It is bittersweet. There's a lot of the volunteers will actually end up crying. It's a great day. It's a happy day for us. Um, tears of happiness, I guess, is more it.